On May 19th, 2021, the anime and manga community received some sad news, as it was announced that manga creator, or mangaka, Kentaro Miura had passed away on May 6th. Miura was an extremely talented mangaka who created eight published works, the most notable of which being his series Berserk. Since Miura's passing, many people who have not experienced Berserk have been wanting to start the series. With this video, I want to help new fans find the best way to experience the series, as well as celebrate the series' significance and the incredible work put into it. But, before I talk about the series, it would be irresponsible of me to not provide a proper content warning, as the series deals with a lot of extremely dark and graphic subject matter and is not recommended for everyone. The Berserk series contains intense graphic violence and gore, sexual assault, rape, child abuse, and scenes implying sexual violence involving minors. The series deals with very dark and uncomfortable themes, and I strongly recommend proceeding with caution. Now, to provide a bit of history on the series. The Berserk manga was originally created by Miura in 1988 as a one-shot prototype for the series, which began publication in 1989. Miura wrote and illustrated 363 chapters of Berserk before his passing, which have been compiled into 40 volumes with 7 chapters that have not yet been released in volume form. The story follows Guts, a mercenary who, after killing his abusive adoptive father Gambino and escaping his former mercenary band, joins the Band of the Hawk, led by the charismatic Griffith. In the Band of the Hawk, Guts leads the raiders and fights alongside many strong mercs, including Casca, a female merc with whom Guts develops somewhat of a tumultuous relationship. But as events unfold, the Band of the Hawk is met with a shocking fate. In 1997, Oriental Light and Magic, or OLM Inc., produced a 25-episode anime series based on the Golden Age arc. This adaptation is very highly regarded and seems to generally be considered the definitive Berserk anime. From 2012 to 2013, Studio 4C released a trilogy of anime films that also adapted the Golden Age, which contained some differences in content from the 1997 series, including some scenes and characters from the manga that the 97 series omitted. Then, in 2016, Leiden Films held a new 24-episode TV anime of... debatable quality. The series was set after the Golden Age and introduced some of the later characters in the series, including Puck, Farnese, Serpico, and Shierke. The series has also spawned various video game adaptations, two of which have been released in the States. Personally, I enjoy both of those games from what I've played of them. It's quite fun to play as the Black Swordsman himself. Now, I'm sure many of you are wondering where to begin, and I'm here to help guide you through that process. Obviously, you can't go wrong with starting with the manga, as that's where the story began, and it is the most complete existing version of the story. The 1997 anime is also a great place to start, but unfortunately it is also currently much harder to access in the States, as it's not currently licensed and the old DVDs are out of print and very expensive. I recommend this series if you can get your hands on it, but sadly it is currently the least accessible version of the series. The movie trilogy is also a perfectly valid place to start, as it covers largely the same content as the 97 series, and I would certainly recommend watching the movies after watching the 97 series, as it establishes parts of the story that are not covered in the show. I won't tell you not to watch the 2016 series, but I certainly would not recommend it as your first exposure to Berserk. I would recommend watching it after at least watching the movie trilogy. As for the games, they seem like they would be just as effective starting points as anything. Interestingly, the Dreamcast game, Sword of the Berserk, actually came to the States before either the manga or the anime, making it many American fans' first exposure to the series. Now, to talk a bit about the influence Berserk has had on the fantasy genre since its creation. As you experience Berserk, you can see Kentaro Miura's various influences as he tends to wear them on his sleeve, such as Hellraiser, Phantom of the Paradise, and Evil Dead. In the same way, you can see Berserk's influence in countless pieces of media that have come since. One franchise that was largely influenced by Berserk is the popular game series Dark Souls. Creator Hidetaka Miyazaki has talked about his love for Berserk, and its influence bleeds into the games. Samuel Dietz, director of the Castlevania animated series, has also talked about his admiration of Berserk and how the 97 anime series was a major influence on the show. Dietz has also stated that he would love to create an animated adaptation of Berserk himself. The character of Guts paved the way for a whole archetype of spiky hair protagonists with giant swords, and this echoes through fantasy media with popular protagonists like Bleach's Ichigo Kurosaki and Final Fantasy VII's Cloud Strife. The Final Fantasy franchise also pays homage to Guts with the Dark Knight characters. After Miura's passing was announced, Final Fantasy XIV players even gathered in Dark Knight armor to pay their respects. 
Mira's influence has not only enriched pop culture tremendously, but has had a meaningful impact on the fans of these stories. Berserk is an incredibly well-crafted series. Mira's art is painstakingly detailed and gorgeous even in its ugliness. While it has a great deal of shocking content, it still feels very meaningful, which I feel separates it from titles like Genocyber or Midori Shoujo Subaki, which serve only for their shock value. The dark and disturbing nature of Berserk serves to develop the characters. In many ways, the aesthetic of the story feels grimdark, and yet there's a glimmer of hope through the darkness. Even in its most nihilistic moments, Berserk shows that its characters are feeling. The main characters aren't resigned to a tragic fate. They want to change their situation for the better, and I think that's what makes the tale enthralling 32 years later. As of now, the fate of the series is unknown. Mira left us with 363 chapters, and it is not known if the series will be continued by a different mangaka or left unfinished. I hope that it does get finished, and I hope that whoever takes the torch from Mira is able to complete his vision. But, in any case, Kentaro Mira, thank you for all you've given us. I slid my ticket across the table and I said, sorry guys, I gotta see about a girl.